Hey guys, what's up and welcome back to the channel. Today it is way too cold outside. It's minus 15 degrees Celsius. No one wants to go outside that weather, so we're gonna stay inside the studio today, but that's okay because this Tuesday, we are starting a new series called Photo Tuesdays. But before I jump into that, let's roll that intro. So in the beginning of the year, I said I want this channel to become more interactive. So I thought, what better way than for you guys to send photos to me, for me to critique them and also edit them myself. So thank you guys for participating in this and sending me photos because without you guys, this episode wouldn't be possible. And if you didn't get a chance to send your favorite photos, don't worry, I made sure to put my email below in the description. So make sure you send your favorite photos and maybe, just maybe, I'll edit and critique your photo. So this week I chose five photos and in all of them there's a common theme, symmetry. Like I've said many times before, personally, I'm a very logical, creative person. I don't do really crazy abstract photography or filmmaking. My brain is very logical and thinks very clearly, so symmetry somehow just suits well for me. Symmetry is just a great compositional technique because it just makes the photo feel right. The photo is balanced and symmetrical and just leaves you at a certain peace when you're looking at it. It's not just crazy and overwhelming, but it's just like, ah, oh, this is really nice and pleasing to look at. All right, let's look at every single photo one by one and I'll give you my positive and constructive feedback. All right, so this is photo number one and I'm so sorry, I don't actually remember who sent me this photo, so please comment below. Tell me who it was so I can give you a shout out for sending this photo. But I really love this photo, how this photographer was able to shoot in the mid sun but still get a nice portrait. It's not an easy task. But this photo has really nice symmetry, the subjects in the middle with nice equal sides and there's a nice separation between the background you can see here, there's this forest here, and then there's the subject in the front, and she's kind of popping out from it. A nice added touch is just the hair right here. It just makes it from a normal portrait to kind of a little bit more artistic and cinematic feel to the shot. The only thing that I would maybe give some constructive feedback is quite a heavy vintage feel to this photo. And that's okay because everyone has their own style, but the only problem is that when you have this kind of a heavy editing style, Sometimes the skin tones can kind of go a little bit wonky. So you even here, you can see it's a little bit purple and kind of reddish. And the way I would just kind of fix that is maybe add a little bit of uh, tint. So maybe just put it more towards green. Or then if you don't want to do the whole photo to have more green, you can go to HSL and take the hue and just slide it down to a little bit more orange, yellow kind of feel. And already you can see kind of the before and after and it's a little bit more natural looking. So that's the only feedback that I would give, constructive feedback. All in all, this was a great photo. Once again, whoever this was, please comment below because I'd love to give you a shout out for this great photo. All right, so this is photo number two and this is taken by Andrik Landfield from Iceland. I love the symmetry, the barns in the middle here, there's layers, there's a foreground kind of bush here with this field and then the mountains. I'm not 100% sure about this blurred out kind of bushes here. It's kind of cool, but at the same time, it's a little bit distracting. And I guess my constructive feedback would be that instead of having these bushes like this, maybe take it and make a circle out of the bushes and you could have kind of just framed the, the barn in the middle of the bushes. That way, it's kind of bring your eyes more towards the barn than being half distracted by these bushes in the front and the barn right here. But still, all in all, great photo, great use of symmetry. I have to get to Iceland. The one crazy thing is I've literally flown through Iceland probably 10 to 20 times going to Canada, but I've never been able to stop there. So I really got to do something about that. All right, so this is photo number three, also taken by Andrik Langfield. And this is the famous crash airplane in Iceland. It always has an epic feel to it. Once again, nice symmetry, you know, right here in the middle, there's a plane. And since you're quite far from the plane taking a shot, there's a nice depth to it. The foreground here is blurring while the plane is in focus here. The only one thing about this photo is the sky is quite blown out. Obviously, if you're getting backlit and you're trying to get the light plane exposed, it's gonna be hard to get the, the sky kind of exposed. But if you did wanna have more exposure in the, in the sky, then you should have shot this a little bit more underexposed and just lift the shadows up. But in this case, because you shot it like this, I would just get rid of the whole sky. So I'll just put a gradient here and maybe just lift the exposure until it's all white. That way it's just not distracting. You don't get this feel that it's kind of a blown out shot. All right, photo number four. This is taken by a Finnish photographer. He's an awesome dude, Samuel Lehtinen. Shout out to you, man. 
This is a great wedding photo. There's great symmetry, the couple's in the middle here. Great emotion, and then just laughing, having a good time. There's nice use of leading lines from the field here. You can see all the lines in the field are kind of leading to the couple. I really don't have much feedback for this. Maybe to really be nitpicky and give you constructive feedback some will maybe just take the time to remove this kind of uh, throwaway hair it's just in the bride's hair maybe that will just kind of put the focus even more here because when I'm looking here I easily go over here and start looking like what's are these little hairs here but I totally understand as a wedding photographer a lot of times you don't have the time to go and edit every single photo one by one and start photoshopping away hairs so I totally understand why you probably didn't do it but if you want to take that photo with the next step maybe try that out and all right, number five is I Was Well by Andrick Langfield. I'm starting to think that there's a little bit of a theme going on in Andrick's photography. He's probably kind of like me that he likes symmetry. I really like this photo. It's nicely posed. You're both looking away from each other. These leading lines in the, in the walls are just leading to you guys so that your eye goes immediately to this part and it's a nice balance with the line in between. My only constructive feedback is, is the hands. Why aren't the hands a little bit over right where the line is? I guess that's my OCD-ness. I'm just this logical creative and I see the symmetry, but then when the hand is not in the middle of the shot, man, it just kind of like, ah. But all in all, this was like a nine out of 10 shot. Having the hands on the line would bring it to 10 out of 10. So make sure next time you just be a little bit more careful about that. But I totally understand the situation. You're probably taking the photo with a tripod or you just have a random friend taking a photo for you who doesn't know how to take photos. So you kind of just have to go with it. But guys, great job on these photos. Great use of symmetry. For all of you watching these videos, I want to challenge you guys to go out and shoot this week and use symmetry in your own photography. Tag my Instagram account so I can check it out and even feature some of your photos in my Insta stories. But now I want to edit three of the photos that were raw, just to show you how I would edit these photos. So let's go back to the barn shot. I love this shot. I would, right in the beginning, just put my preset here. Okay, it's already got a nice little green cinematic tone to it. I would just bring the exposure maybe a little bit down and to make the barn pop out, I would put a radio filter here. You know, just to bring the, your eyes more to that. You gotta be careful with this, that doesn't get too obvious, but even that, it's a nice little, I'll show you the before and after. Just brings your eyes more to the barn. And I wanna make this into a really moody photo, so I'm gonna bring a gradient filter here, bring the exposure down increase clarity let's see how much it would look if you put some contrast as well nice really moody now this might be a little bit too green so let's try putting purple no actually and then like the greenish tone i'm gonna bring just the shadows down a little bit and then the highlights up as well so check this out before after Nice moody shot from Iceland. All right, we're gonna go to the next photo. So this was the original photo first. I'm just gonna make sure the plane is directly in the middle of the shot so it's just perfectly symmetrical, smoothing out that. Like I did before, I don't really like it that the sky is kind of half blown out, half showing. So I'm gonna just put a radial gradient here and make the exposure higher. So now the sky is totally blown out and just make sure it's here as well. Now I'm just gonna add my preset. This is my favorite preset, TH4. Okay, now with this, I notice that the sky is coming on this side as well. So I'm just gonna brush this in, lighten the exposure. Bam, that's good. All right, now I'm just gonna bring the exposure down in the whole photo. When you're looking at the whites, you can see it's quite blue. So I'm just gonna go maybe 6,500. All right, that's a little bit more warm, maybe not that much, do 6,200. And it's quite green, so I'm gonna put it up the tint, bring down the shadow, let's see how much. And for this shot, I'm gonna put some clarity, I don't usually. But look at that, let's see if as well it would help to put a radial filter around the plane. Yeah, I like that because using the radio filter then your eyes aren't going to the corners here but they're going immediately to that. So let's go look before, after. Sometimes if I get really into picking a photo, like for example this rock right here, it seems like it's really sticking out, I would just remove it. By removing these distracting objects, it's just gonna make your eyes go more to the plane right away. So that will help out. 
All right, last photo. Gonna make sure it's actually 100% centered. Ooh, it is right away. Perfectly symmetrical. Lines are even. Gonna put my preset on. Okay, it's a little bit dark, so I'm just gonna add some exposure. You can see that the tint is quite purple, so I'm gonna add just maybe a little bit more green tone, not too much. I'm gonna just put a little bit more warmth. Okay, I don't wanna add too much warmth though, because then the background goes like that. But I noticed that their skin's not really popping out, so I'm gonna go to the HSL. Add a little bit of saturation to the oranges, maybe a little bit of luminance as well. And all right, that's the before and the after. All right guys, so here's the three photos edited. Let's look at them. Here's the barn shot, here's the plane shot, and here's and drink and his girlfriend or wife, I'm not sure. Perfect, this looks good. All right, thank you guys for tuning into the first ever episode of Photo Tuesday. Like I said before, if you didn't have a chance to send your photo in, make sure you email them to me, send them through WeTransfer, Dropbox, so I can store them for next week's episode. Also, there are still 16 days left in the 20K giveaway. We are less than 100 subscribers away from 20K. So if you guys wanna help out, make sure you share the channel, spread the word, because we are on our way to 20K. And if you're new to the channel and you haven't yet heard about the 20K giveaway, Aperture has kindly partnered up to give away the ultimate YouTube lighting setup. They're gonna be giving away the 120D light and the Light Dome Mini. This is the same setup that I'm using right now for my own very YouTube channel. So make sure you click the link below and be a part of the competition because there's 16 days left and you might be the one to win the prize. And lastly, if you like this week's episode, make sure you smash that like button, comment below, and make sure you subscribe to the channel so you can stay up to date with the latest videos. Guys, have a fantastic week.